Good morning. This is Sunday on the 10th. This is the Reach Out Ministry. We had some delays because of the snow. It was pretty slickery trying to drive. And then uh, when we can't go to church, we usually have a Facebook at Nathan and Amanda's house, but their electricity had been out for a while, so we're broadcasting this on a Monday. But if you have your Bibles, look with me in Luke chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 16. It says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now, back in the days when they would go to the synagogue, not one person would necessarily read all the scripture. They would hand the book to different ones that were in the congregation, and he stood up that he might read. And I want you to notice this, too. He said it was a custom that they go to the synagogue. Uh, people have gotten kind of away from doing the custom of what the Lord asks us to do. He says to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. And that means on Sundays, you're supposed to do what's customarily right and get up, get ready, and, and go to church. And that's what he did. And it says, And there was delivered unto him the book of Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath appointed, appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. And that liberty simply means freedom. And uh, we want to stay here, but we want to go over into uh, Isaiah 61 and read verses 1 and 2. But we'll be coming back here in just a little bit. In Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our Lord, to comfort all that mourn. So long before Jesus was telling them over here in the synagogue this day, that he was there to heal the brokenhearted and, and to take care of those that had special needs. Here we read it in Isaiah 61. Uh, he's proclaiming the same thing, of binding up the brokenhearted and uh, proclaiming liberty of the captive and open the prisons to them that are bound. So he's not telling them something that hadn't already been written in the Old Testament. You know, the Old Testament, people say, well, that's outdated because he's come along. Well, you might say that, but if you really read and study, you'll find where the Old Testament always is telling about something that's going to happen in the New Testament. And so now that he is fulfilling Isaiah 61 by what he is telling them here. And then also, we want to read in Romans, in chapter 14, and we're going to read verse 6. He hath regarded the day, regarded it unto the Lord, and he hath regarded not the day to the Lord, he doeth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not, 
to the Lord, he should eateth not and give thanks to the Lord. So no matter what conditions we're in, he's saying whether they're eating or whether they're not eating, we should always give thanks to the Lord for whatever reason. And that's something that we've kind of gotten away from doing too over the years. If you will go back with me now in uh, Luke chapter 4, we're going to pick up in verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Well, when is the acceptable time of the Lord? Any year is an acceptable time. Throughout the ages, even hundreds and thousands of years ago, people were getting saved. And that was an acceptable year for them to find Christ as their Savior. And it's an acceptable year for people today that don't know Christ to turn to him and believe upon him and let 2021 be the acceptable year that they receive the Lord as their Savior. And then it says he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. You know, even from an early age, he was first found uh, at 12 years old in the temple. And the answers he was giving and questions he were asking was way beyond his years. And it amazed them. They were amazed that any uh, young boy this young could know and understand so much. And verse 21 says, And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. What scripture? Well, the scripture that was written back in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 22. He says it's been fulfilled now. And all that bear him witness and wondered at the glorious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Now, that's something that you read it throughout the New Testament that they just automatically considered that this was Joseph's son. But he's not Joseph's son. He's the son of God. And Joseph, if you will, I guess you could say he's like a surrogate father. Now, it didn't mean that Joseph didn't love him. Oh, yes, he loved him. If you just as a few weeks back in the Christmas stories, we was reading how uh, the Lord was coming to Joseph in dreams to take Jesus out of Bethlehem and go into Egypt and he in a dream in Egypt to go back into Israel. He loved him, and because he followed what God gave him in a dream, it saved Jesus' life as a little boy. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Well, they may think it is, but no, he's not. He's not the, the father uh, of Christ Jesus. And he said unto them, Surely I will say unto this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Canaprium, do also here in thy country. So no matter where you go or what you do, you should live every day uh, as a child of God and representing him in all of your life. If you will go with me in John chapter 4, and uh, we're going to pick up verse 4 and read verse 30. Let's back up into 29. And this woman is telling him after he told her things about her life that no one could have known. And she said, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did, is not this the Christ? And they went out of the city and came to him. And in the meanwhile, the disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. They were wanting him to eat. But even though this lady was a 
not Jewish. She uh, was amazed at what Jesus knew because he said, no, you, she said, you've been married five times and she had, and that's something that he should not have even known about her. If you will now go back with me in chapter uh, 8 of John, chapter 8. And we're going to read verse 56 through 57. He's telling them here about Abraham, and they considered Abraham their father. He says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And then the Jews said unto him, Are thou art not yet fifty years old? How has it? that you've been seen of Abraham. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. And he said, I was in existence before Abraham ever was. And they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. They were going to stone him to death, but how? How do you escape that? You're surrounded by all these that are wanting to kill you. I'll give you the answer. It was not his time yet. It simply was not his time. But they were angry enough. They wanted to carry him out and stone him to death uh, because of what he said. Back in Luke in chapter 4 in verse 24. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months with great famine, though throughout all the land. But none of them was Elias sent, save the serpent, uh, ser I can't say that word. Uh, Superior, a city in Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. So he, he wasn't sent to go to see the Jews. He was sent to see a stranger, an outcast. And it says, And many lepers were healed in Israel in the time of Elisus, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, save Nahum the Syrian. And uh, if you recall, he had leprosy and he asked uh, this prophet what he should do. Could he be cured? And he said, yes, go into the Jordan River and dip yourself seven times. Well, he did it one, two, three, four, five, six. He's still a leper. And he began to question, is this going to work? And the seventh time he dipped, he'd come up, his skin was that of a baby. He was cured of his leprosy. And it says, in all, those, in all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. They, that made them mad. It stirred up a hornet's nest. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him into the brow of the hill whereon the city was built that they might cast him down headlong. They wanted to throw him over the cliff head first, but he passed through the midst of them and went his way. And just like what we read a while ago, they wanted to kill him. And he walked away unscathed. And here again, he says he passed through the midst of them. And the midst means the very middle of them. He went right through the middle of them and he passed and he went his way because it was not his time to do what the Lord wanted him to do by fulfilling the scriptures and dying on the cross for your sins and for mine. You know, God does everything on a timetable and it, his timetable and our timetable may not be exactly the same. But when it was time for Jesus to die in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus didn't want to die. 
Uh, he asked the Lord, let this cup pass from me, the bitter cup of death. But that wasn't God's will. So when the timing was right and it was time for Jesus to be crucified, he was. But up until then, throughout the Bible, many, many times it says how he escaped. And they didn't, they, he like, like blindfolds were put on him. And he walked right through their midst and got away. If you have your Bibles now, turn with me uh, into uh, John chapter 10, verse 37. If I do not do the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe me not, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I am in him. If you don't believe me, if nothing else, believe the works that you see me do, that it is of the Father. And therefore, they saw again. Uh, this word again means it's already happened to him a time or two. And now they're saying, uh, let's, they sought him again and take him out, but he escaped out of their hands. Three times we've read today where he escaped harm from the people that wanted to crucify him. Jesus Christ is the greatest person that ever walked on the face of this earth. He was human. He was God. He, he was tempted as all others were tempted. But you know, he never committed a sin. He had no sin in him whatsoever. And I'm here to tell you, I'm perfectly satisfied with the Lord and the Savior that I serve because only he could die on a cross to pardon my sins. He's the only person in the world that could have died on the cross that could pardon your sins. And if you have not ever given your life to Christ Jesus, I urge you to trust in him, to believe upon him, because there's no other way an individual can enter into God's glory except through the blood of Jesus Christ. He paid a great heavy price on that cross for you and for me. And for you to reject Christ Jesus, you're telling him he wasn't good enough for you. But I'm here to tell you, there is no other way under heaven whereby you must be saved except through God's only Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for listening today. I'm sorry we had to delay it a day, but I thank you and may God bless you and may you have a great year. Thank you very much. <laughs>